Yeah, he is the rally organizer, remember, and uh, a great contestant on the event in the past himself. There he is refueling. He first contested the event back in 1980, the second ever Dakar, which he led, but was then excluded for putting his bike on a local truck on one of the road sections. They didn't like that. He won the event in 1981 and in 1983 on a BMW, and then he won on four wheels as well in 1992 for Mitsubishi, finished second for Citroen in 1994, and then in 1995 he took over the organization of the event. So he's been running it ever since the mid-90s. This is the seventh Dakar under his control. He says that's his first job refueling, so uh, he's quite enjoying himself. This is a little look at some of the ground they had to cover today. The first of the sand dunes, which can catch out the unwary. It wasn't a huge section of dunes today, but just to get them in the mood for that sort of terrain that they'll be coming across. And of course, lots of mountainous terrain, a lot of rocks and stones to deal with. Could get a lot of punctures and very easy for the bikes to make a mistake. Hasn't been any rain in this area for a long time, so it was very, very dusty as well. And that caught out some of the competitors throughout the day. Alfie Cox has always got a smile. The South African always ready to charge and psyching himself up a little bit before the start of today's stage. The road book on the handlebars of the bikes as they get set to go on this longer stage. Uh, they're beginning to increase in length day by day now as we continue on the rally. 333 kilometers today, that's about 200 miles. And a great run indeed from the Chilean, Carlo De Gavardo. Here he is, number 12, the sensation of the day. He's not a works rider, he is a privateer, but uh, with this sort of performance, surely KTM might pick him up in the future. He only gave up being a farmer towards the end of last year to concentrate on being a bike rider. He won by 21 seconds today's stage ahead of Richard Sankt. He broke his engine after just 100 kilometers in the first stage last year, so things going very much better for him. Now this is the German rider, Jürgen Meyer, also on board a KTM. Now he is a works rider, but it wasn't a very good day, I'm afraid, for Jürgen Meyer. After this bit of filming, he came off after 159 kilometers of the stage, about the halfway point, and suffered a broken right collarbone. So sadly, there he was, the pictures coming through later on of Jürgen being carted off to the medical center and uh, still in good spirits, but very, very disappointed to be out of the running. He finished fifth on last year's event. He's a KTM dealer from near Stuttgart in Germany and doesn't contest all the rest of the rally raids throughout the year, just the Dakar. Had been pushing hard, had been warned by Heinz Kinnigadner, the boss of KTM, to take it easy, but I'm afraid he didn't. Also bad luck for another Meyer, this time Andrea Meyer there on the left, and she had an engine failure today with her BMW. So unfortunately, she had to wait for the support truck to arrive. Well, I think uh, serious engine problems. About 500, millim 500 meters from here, rather, I started to lose oil, and I heard some rather strange noises from the engine, so I decided to stop. Everything was full of oil, and now I have to change the engine. I have to wait for my second motor, which is on the support truck, and take a while for them to get here. I just have to wait and hope to continue. Well, she'd been practicing her engine changes recently and in the off-season because she lost an engine towards the end of last year's event and lost so much time that it dropped her down to 53rd position at the end of it in Cairo last year. So hopefully her fast engine change today won't have dropped her down quite so much. We'll uh, see exactly where that is on tomorrow's results. Now, the man who's still leading the rally on the bikes, Richard Sankt, winner of the last two years, of course, and... Uh, only lost 21 seconds to De Gavardo. Not really too bothered about De Gavardo's performance. He's not one of Sank's major rivals in this year's rally. He's become the first rider to win more than one stage this year. And in fact, uh, bear in mind, he only won two stages on his way to victory both last year and the year before. And today's stage performance from him in spite of being stuck in fourth gear. So for much of the way, he was in fourth gear and it still didn't slow him down too much and coming through second on today's stage. Now, Kari Tiernan on another of the KTMs, still competitive all day long. And in fact, uh, today he was third fastest and that's put him, moved him up a little bit. He was in fourth, he's now into third. Juan Roma is the only man challenging those KTMs up front. 
He is on the twin cylinder BMW, but he found the initial twisty part of the stage pretty difficult with that heavier twin cylinder bike, and then couldn't really use the straight line speed advantage later due to being caught in the other rider's dust. There really wasn't much way of uh, overtaking in all of that dust. So Juan Roma ended up in fourth place on the stage today. Fabrizio Mioni, the brave Italian, continuing on his way. He dropped a little bit down to fifth position, still just under seven minutes off the lead of the rally. And Alfie Cox, the South African, uh, also just losing a couple of places today. Just one place, in fact, for him, down to sixth place overall. Again, just over seven minutes off the rally lead. Jordi Archeron's had the puncture yesterday, you may remember from our coverage. He moved up from 17th at the start of today to 11th, but some 22 minutes off the lead, so the Spaniard has plenty of work to do. Number 11 machine, Cyril Dupre on the BMW, and uh, he's running well, but bad news for his teammate Jimmy Lewis, who fell and is nursing an injured hand this evening. Isidre Esteve Pujol, another good performance for the Spanish rider today, and uh, he was ninth fastest on the stage, and that's put him into seventh overall. And the Swedish rider, Per Gunnar Lundmark, going very well indeed, only his second Dakar, and uh, he's into 12th place overall. There's all his practicing up in northern Sweden where he comes from. He's usually on snow. Just to uh, let you know how the Brits are getting on, John Deacon was storming along today, trying to make up for the broken wire that cost him a half an hour on the French stage earlier in the week, plus an additional half hour penalty for turning back on that stage. Well, John was 13th on the stage today, and that moved him up from 123rd place into 39th place overall. The results of today's stage then, Richard Sank doing enough there by holding on to second place to maintain the overall lead and still only that one BMW of Juan Roma getting amongst the KTMs up front. The overall positions, you can see a five minute lead for Sank. The other British rider, Mike Hughes, still running in the competition. He was 103rd fastest today and that puts him in 102nd place overall. It was very fast with many stones and dunes, says Carlo, at the end of uh, his stage victory today. It was pretty hot on the stage, but my bike is okay. It's well prepared, and uh, I was very, very strong on it today. He was asked then if he thought he could catch Richard Sachs, the overall rally leader at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think that's what I don't think that's what I'm planning to do. It's not my target. He wants to win the rally, uh, but not me. I'm not aiming for that. I'm aiming to finish in the top five, and I believe I have the bike capable of doing that. So Richard Sankt, uh, happy to let Tegavado take honours today. Um, but still, pretty confident. It was okay today at the beginning. But then in the middle of the stage, I broke the gear shift lever. I was in fourth gear, so I was then stuck in fourth gear for the remainder of the stage. So it was a long time. Sometimes it was difficult, but it, it could have been worse. It was a shame though, because I think I could have uh, gained a little bit more time. Is the gap between you and de Gavardo important? He's, we were asked, and he says, no, I don't think it's important. I'm happy. I could have lost much more time. It's okay. It was a good day for me. So a very cool looking Richard Sank doesn't seem to be too phased, does he? And at the moment, he's got just over five minutes advantage. Coming up after the break, we'll see how those Schlesser buggies were getting on and if the Mitsubishis could keep up the pace. Stay with us here on British Eurosport. Some songs just sound better behind the wheel. Today's stage was the first of eight Mauritanian stages and the first true desert stage, the longest of the rally at around 400 miles of timed section. 
running from Smara to El Hualuaya into Mauritania and they're going to be in Mauritania for several days now. Today's horrific incident of a KTM support vehicle hitting a landmine had nothing to do with the recent threats from political activists in Western Sahara, but was nonetheless shocking for that. In an area known to have landmines set many years ago, the assistance vehicle went off the mark track by just 20 metres. So on to the bike section of the rally today, after that uh, bad news about the driver of that support vehicle. He was in fact uh, driving this support vehicle for the, one of the KTM riders, Jose Eduardo Ribeiro, and he is now in hospital in the Canary Islands. To the bikes and the riders and some disappointment for Sweden as their top man, Per Gunnar Lundmark, was wandering around on the stage this morning. You may have wondered why he was looking so lost. He wasn't looking for his motorcycle, he was looking for his chain. The chain had come off the bike and he had eventually managed to find it and was now rushing to get it put back onto the KTM. He wasn't too impressed, however. We managed to catch up with him, but uh, it's not good news for Lundmark. The chain is broken and I lose my third and fourth gear too. So I'm in big problem. This night, the KTM truck's coming so LA. I have one spare engine, but, but it's... Uh, I think it's coming around 2 o'clock or something in the morning. So I know what I'm going to do this night. <laughs> Shit! Ah, such a shame. He was third on yesterday's stage and into seventh overall, but tonight he hadn't finished the stage. He was 107th at the third checkpoint. More problems here was the man who was fastest yesterday, Esteve Puyol, the Spaniard. Good one day, not so good the next. He ran out of fuel, had to have a tow from Francois Flick. In fact, didn't lose too much time. He was 12th on today's stage, and that's dropped him from fifth overall down to sixth. So here is the man who gave him that useful tow, the Frenchman Francois Flick, 10th today, 36-year-old, who was a motocross rider in the 80s. And since when he's competed in all sorts of sports, including mountain biking, triathlon, kayaking, this is his fourth Dakar. Last year, he was seventh overall, he was top amateur and first in the production class. Now, to the leaders of the rally and Juan Roma on the BMW, battling with Richard Sankt for much of today's stage. Fabrizio Mioni was also a part of that lead group. These three really have drawn away from the rest of the opposition. Roma here on the number two bike, taking his third stage win of the 2001 Dakar. A good stage for BMW, a lot of it was flat out, perhaps not this part across the dunes, but there was plenty where he could just open it up and ride as fast as possible. Richard Sankt here, not losing as much as he might have expected. He knew that the stage would suit Roma's BMW. And it's a good battle developing between these two, similar to last year. Last year, Roma was on a KTM and led Richard Sankt by some 22 minutes when it broke down just a few days before the finish. Again, the battle is on and they've swapped bikes for this year. Number nine, Alfie Cox, the South African. Well, if you remember, yesterday he had a terrible time. He broke a front wheel and that cost him an hour and 22 minutes. So he's down in eighth position overall, but he was third fastest on this particular stage. Some of these sections, as you can see, very, very fast indeed. Juan Roma alongside Fabrizio Mioni. And Mioni also putting in a good performance today. Fourth on the stage, that's put him into third place overall. And he's still only seven minutes and 53 seconds off the lead. So we have a KTM first, a BMW in second, a KTM in third. These top three very close. But then we go back to this man, Jordi Archerons, who's in fourth place overall. But he's a full 29 minutes behind. So he needs problems really for all three front runners for him to be able to get onto the top step of the podium. Still two weeks, or just under two weeks of the rally to go. Now, Britain's John Deacon, fast today. He was sixth on the stage. He's into 10th place overall now, up from 16th. So good news at last for the 38-year-old Brit, who says that he's been having more luck on this Dakar than he has in all his other previous Dakars put together. His teammate, Jimmy Lewis, still riding with that injured hand, but seventh fastest today, seventh overall, up one position from yesterday. 
and the Chilean, Carlo de Gavardo, still running well. He was eighth today and runs in fifth place overall. His intention very much to try and finish in the top five, make it all the way to Dakar. Disappearing down behind the dunes. Very different terrain to what we saw the last couple of days. Now, Juan Roma, just watch him at the end of the stage here. Look at how the bike is moving around on the rocks and stones. Now, that just gives you some idea how brave these guys are. This was towards the end of the stage, and he actually approached the final checkpoint from the wrong direction. Now, you're allowed to do that, but if you do come in from the wrong direction, you do have to do the final 300 meters of the stage in the right direction. So he's going here back along the route slightly to look for the white marker board that indicates that last 300 meter section. Then he does a hairpin right here around that last marker board so that he enters the checkpoint from the correct direction. There we are between the boards. There's a couple of red boards a bit further up. And Juan Roma with this slightly different route on the last part coming in as fastest today. Gaining him some two minutes and 20 seconds on Richard Sankt. So today's results then, Roma, two minutes 20 ahead of Richard Sankt. Alfie Cox, a good performance from him, but the disappointment of yesterday means he really doesn't feature now in terms of the overall results. Let's take a look at those overall positions. Then Richard Stank, Sank still leads. Those top three with quite an advantage over the rest. And the other British rider, Mike Hughes, he is up to 88th place overall. The stage went well, says the stage winner. I passed uh, the KTMs and I was fast, uh, so I managed to take the stage victory. Everything went well. I spent the day really leading and opening up the beast and at the end I relaxed a little bit, so they almost caught up with me. The end for me was a very good day. They suffered more than we did. So good news for Juan Roma, but Richard Sankt, not too disappointed to lose just a little bit. Today we had a very long special stage, 518 kilometers. We knew that it was a very fast stage, and we knew that the BMWs would be fast here. In fact, Roma took the lead by about two to three minutes, but with Fabrizio, towards the end I worked together with Fabrizio and we managed to catch him a little bit, so that's okay. It's a stage we would expect to lose quite a lot of time, and we didn't lose too much. So, Sankt, reasonably satisfied, he retains the overall lead, and Fabrizio Mioni, the other, pleased with today's performance. It's a normal day, he says, nothing special. I got a little bit nervous at some moments because a part of the route today was very fast, and you basically had to open up wide. I was a little worried about the engine, whether it would last that sort of treatment, so I didn't push too hard, but it was good. So, good news for Fabrizio Mioni. Now let's hear from Britain's own John Deacon. Good evening, Eurosport fans. It's been a fantastic day today. Proper desert rally stage with the first of the dunes and the big dune crossings. Uh, 619 kilometers, the longest stage of the rally. And it's been absolutely perfect for my, my bike, the Boxer. At long last, I've been able to use all of that power. Um, the helicopter clocked me at over 110 knots today, so it's been quite a long day but for the kilometers, but not so long in time. It's been absolutely beautiful, and uh, with the hot weather now, it's the Dakar's just starting, I think. So keep watching, and maybe uh, I should move up in the placings in the next few days, because I'm feeling really strong. Feeling really strong after over five hours of riding today on that long, long stage. Good news from John Deacon. Coming up after the break, we'll see what's been happening amongst their four-wheeled brethren. So stay with us for Dakar coverage on Eurosport.
Pajero. New rules. Some songs just sound better behind the wheel. Tracks that make you want to drive simply for the sake of it. And these are the 60 original and best road tracks. They're the greatest drive songs ever written. All on four CDs or cassettes called On the Road. They're all the songs that'll stay with you. However far you go. to the Total Paris Dakar 2001 with Euromaster. What drives us is you. Welcome back to Dakar coverage here on Eurosport as now we turn our attention to the cars as they also made the crossing from Morocco into Mauritania. This area has certainly been uh, the site of problems in the past and as we heard earlier on, the landmine that exploded today and injured one of the drivers of one of the support vehicles. Thankfully, none of the other competitors were involved in that at all and everyone made it through the stage safely. Now, Jose Maria Servia in the number 202 Schlesser buggy was the fastest on this stage. That's his third stage win of the event so far and he's doing a great job in the overall lead now that Schlesser has dropped back down the order. Running second on the stage today, Hiroshi Masuoka in the Mitsubishi Pajero. He runs in third place overall. And Jean-Pierre Fontenay is in second overall. Let's go on board with Jean-Pierre as he starts to talk to us a little bit about the challenge that has gone a little bit from Jean-Louis Schlesser. Well, he says, for us, the event is day in, day out, and what happened to Jean-Louis will not change anything for us. But today we have to be careful because the stage is very long and we don't have mechanics at the end of the stage to prepare the car so we have to hope that it all stays together. But at the moment all's going well. Today, the 8th of January, it's uh, the birthday of my son. He's eight years old today. I've missed his birthday for seven years in a row because I've been doing with Dakar. I have to say I would like to do some, miss some more. I'm going to have to blow a kiss to his brother as well, otherwise he'll get jealous, he said. So uh, Jean-Pierre Fontenay, his son celebrating his birthday, but Jean-Pierre busy on the Dakar for yet another season. Now, Jean-Louis Schlesser. He's the man who suffered from that one-hour penalty yesterday. And then some more little problems today. Just uh, finding the sand, getting him a little stuck. Now, Schlesser, if you remember, got the one-hour penalty for having a push start at one of the checkpoints. And it was because it wasn't just his uh, teammate, Henri Manu, gave him a push. It was several other people, and that's not allowed in the regulations. It meant he had to start today 38th setting off because the one hour penalty put him down in 38th place at the end of yesterday's stage and that meant he had to overtake a lot of cars several trucks as well so he didn't do a bad job in spite of this problem that we've just seen he still managed to finish fourth on the stage and is in sixth place overall despite that one hour penalty the 
two-wheel drive buggy, sometimes finding it hard to get through the dunes. All the competitors making their way through. We haven't lost too many as yet. 100 cars started today. We've only lost 12 from the original number that set off from Paris. Jutta Kleinschmidt was fifth fastest today, the 38-year-old first lady to ever win a stage on the Dakar. Still running, she is in fifth place overall, but 46 minutes off the lead pace. Carlos Souza of Portugal still going too. He's sixth today and fourth place overall, some 44 minutes off the pace. Crashed badly last year, but is back and in fine form so far this season. From a four-wheel drive pickup to very much a two-wheel drive pickup, that of Bruno Sabi, the Ranger Pro Truck. And Sabi still going reasonably well today, despite the dunes not suiting that two-wheel drive machine. He was seventh today, eighth overall, so still very much in the top ten. Teammate Philippe Bomberg, who had huge problems yesterday, is some eight hours back, which includes some penalties, so he's down in 48th position. Top diesel on the event is this one, Gerard Marcy and Jean-Paul Cotre, eighth today and in ninth place overall. Problems though today for Gregoire de Mevius. Ninth on the stage, but uh, had a change, a left front tyre. Nothing too disastrous. Still running well. He had major, major problems early on in the rally, trying to find his way back from that, and the Belgian doing a reasonable job. His teammate Thierry de Laverne, by the way, was only 12th today, lost 49 minutes. So Nissan's challenge really is dropping away. It's been surprisingly strong for most of the rally so far, but today was not good news for the Nissans. Riding on board with the buggy of Stefan Orard. This Volkswagen buggy. It's running 11th place overall at the moment. And they're talking about where are they going in the right direction, says Stefan. There are no tracks, there's nobody in front. Are we going the right way? Which direction should we be going in? Martinez alongside him, hopefully going to sort that out. Now, problems, major problems today for Kenjiro Shinazuka and Fred Gallagher, co-driver. We co -driver. lost the in the battery and we put the spare one on, but now it's blowing the fuel injection fuse. So, bad news, electrical problems yesterday and again today. So the stage results, Servia fastest by one, by just a little bit. Uh, Thierry de la Verne actually dropped back a little bit at the final result, so uh, wasn't quite as well up as that in the end. De la Verne losing some time. Let me just tell you that in T1, the production class, Stefan Perahatsel now has the lead in T1 by over an hour from Thierry Magnaldi. Of the Brits, Rogers and Turner made it through yesterday in 101st place, and Mark and Paul Round were in 46th overall, but didn't make it through to the end as yet. And Jose Maria Servia, the fastest on today's stage. Very pleased indeed with the performance of the machine. Beautiful stage, he said, with lots of sand dunes. Uh, we were careful, but everything went well, and it should be ready for tomorrow. And now, Jean-Pierre Fontenay. So the difficult thing was that it was very, very fast. And then a lot of stones as well at one section, so there we had to slow down. And we were going well there. We had to be careful. We had to avoid flying over the dunes too much. It was a cocktail of different conditions. The dunes as well. You take everything in a shaker and you shake it up. And that's what it was like today. Not so bad. So Jean-Pierre Fontenay staying in touch at the top of the table. Coming up after the break, a very quick look at the trucks and a little bit of a look behind the scenes of some of the organizers' work in the Dakar.
the new Mitsubishi Pajero pin-in. Take it off-road. What Euromaster does for each driver on the Paris-Dakar Rally, Euromaster does for each driver every day of the year in its service centres. Euromaster. What drives us is you. Tyres, exhausts, brakes, shocks, batteries, oil. Euromaster. Autosport International. Top cars, top teams, Formula One drivers, rally crates, top riders in bike sport. Call 0870-264-4444 or look at the website. Back to the Total Paris Dakar 2001 with Total. The trucks continue to thunder their way across the desert. And the number 424 machine we're looking at here, the former leader of the truck section, the Camas of Chaguini, lost some time yesterday and dropped back behind his teammate Kabarov. Now Kabarov was again fastest today. Chaguini close behind, so the Camas running one and two. Carol Loprais was third today, and De Azevedo was fourth on the stage. So let's take a look at the overall standings now. Overall, Kabarov has the advantage by seven minutes, and then it's a big gap back to De Azevedo, La Price, who was third today, but is in fourth place overall. Now, this might surprise you, being a rally and all about going as fast as possible, but you get speed limits on the Dakar, particularly in built-up areas, the villages that the drivers have to go through. The radar gun is in operation, and they have to behave. Uh, Number 200, uh, 200 passed 65. at 65 kilometers per hour. That's a reasonable speed. Well, indeed, they check through many of the villages, and a fine will be levied if a driver or motorbike rider goes over the speed limits. Now, John Deacon actually got done for this just the other day, and Jean Brucey on a bike has been done a couple of times. There are many children here in the village, and we have to be seen to slow the riders and drivers, otherwise they will get a fine of a thousand US dollars. And in fact, if they do get fined, the competitors have to pay that fine to charity, often going to Médecins Sans Frontières, uh, one of the medical charities that operates worldwide, and that's what happens if you speed. Now we're taking a look back at some of the action from yesterday. It was another long stage that they went through, the final stage through Morocco. Glad to say there were no problems in the end from Polisario, the organization that's looking for independence of Western Sahara. There were threats before the rally came through, threats that were repeated just uh, as the rally got started, but I'm glad to say that nothing came of those threats and they're now into Mauritania. Two people did have problems, and uh, it's not always easy in this tricky terrain to get it just right. Particularly easy to get caught out by some of the big holes and rocks for the motorcyclists charging along. And one of the ones who got it slightly wrong yesterday was Frederic Montcassin. You may have seen it on our pictures yesterday, but another chance to see what happened to the former Tour de France cyclist. Let's just see what happened to him. Here he is, the number one, two, two. Watch this one. Oh. Painful looking fall indeed for Frederick Moncasa. I'm glad to say that he wasn't badly hurt by that and was able to get himself up, as you can see, and get back on to the bike. We caught up with him later yesterday evening. We asked him what happened. He said, well, I just, I just went straight over the top. 
Sit up on there. Was that your first crash? Do it. All right. Yes, he says it's the first crash, and hopefully it's the last yeah. crash. Well, he did survive it, but uh, another man who was in trouble yesterday was this man, Giovanni Sala. Now, he broke part of the trailing arm on the bike towards the end of the stage, so he lost a great deal of time. Well, about 10 kilometers before this spot, I felt a bit of a problem with the suspension arm, but I tried to keep going. Unfortunately, in the end, it just broke completely. I'm just going to have to wait until my truck arrives and gives me some assistance. Eh, ho provato ad andare avanti nonostante la moto non fosse al 100% però purtroppo alla fine si è rotta definitivamente e so, ho dovuto fermarmi desperate problems for Giovanni Sala and uh, he lost some 4 hours 42 minutes as a result of waiting it dropped him down into 33rd overall Now, tomorrow's stage starts and finishes in the same place as they do a marathon loop. It's 518 kilometers, and there's very little direction being given. They've got a couple of pages in the road book, and they have to work it out themselves to the various checkpoints. It looks more like a, a course for a yacht race than it does for a rally, and its navigation is going to be extremely difficult. So, we should see quite a lot of changes after tomorrow's stage. And there'll be plenty to look forward to. Will Roma continue the challenge of Richard Sank in the bikes? And will Serbia stay up front in the cars? Don't forget, you can catch up with all the news on the website, www.eurosport.com. And you can ask any questions to the Eurosport riders, including John Deacon. If you want to, ask him something on the website and he will get an answer back to you. Thank you for joining us here on Eurosport for our coverage of the Dakar. We'll be back again tomorrow. Hope you will too. Bye-bye for now. Total Paris Dakar 2001 with Total Euromaster what drives us is you and